Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio with another project for the ON18 Bandit Canyon Railway. This week I want to combine a little bit of track and roadbed work with a little bit of scenery work to create a natural arch bridge here across Bandit Canyon itself. Now inevitably there will be someone in the comments who's going to point out that no real railroad would ever build track across a natural bridge like this. It would be unsafe, unstable, whatever. For that person, I have two things to say. One, I know. And B, I don't care because it's going to look really cool. So I'm going to do it anyway. I originally had planned to have a wooden bridge here, so I cut this gap out in the uh, in the roadbed. I wish I'd saved that little piece, but it's probably long gone. So now I need to make a template so I can match this shape right here and cut a new piece of sub roadbed out of some uh, half inch plywood. Now I'll just put a scrap of cardboard under here. Draw a line where I want the edges of my natural bridge to be. Sorry for the state of my workbench today. It's a little messy. I might have too many projects going on at the moment. Ha! <laughs> nah! That's crazy talk. Never too many. All right. Now the rest of this I'm just going to freehand. Okay, that's just about perfect. Now I'll use this as a template to cut a piece of plywood to go right here. I traced the shape onto a scrap of some half inch plywood and then cut it out with my scroll saw. Then I went back and rounded off the top edges with uh, a utility knife, kind of just whittling it away and uh, smoothing it out later with some sandpaper. Then I also cut a pair of uh, plywood cleats to hold the new bridge in position between the existing sections of roadbed. I'm going to glue one on each side. I'm going to place the bridge on here temporarily so I can trace the outline of the track. Now this is some uh, Midwest N-scale cork roadbed which I use regularly for ON18 as well. Let's get a good smear of yellow glue on here. And we've got some push pins hold this in place while the glue dries. Now we let the glue dry on this too. Use a sanding block, smooth out the ends and kind of bevel the edges a little bit. Should be able to just slide this in in the back. Now, one more thing I want to do before I glue this into place. I want to make a start on the rock work for the arch by tracing this onto a piece of some two inch thick polystyrene foam. I want this to be just a little bit wider, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch, so it can come up and overlap it on each side. Now I can glue this in. Then I've got some extra ties I can slide in under this gap to finish that off. Now I'll use a hot wire tool to cut out this basic shape. Now I need to hollow this out a little bit so it'll fit snug up around that plywood. 
and I'm sure some of you are probably wondering why I didn't just make the whole thing, the whole bridge out of foam. Well, the reason is, is because I wanted it to have more structural strength than this foam can provide. So I chose to make it out of plywood. The two sides of Bandit Canyon actually expand and contract with changes in temperature and humidity because it's made of wood. And, uh, you know, I wanted something stronger than foam to hold those two sides apart. So first I cut down along my outline and then come back and uh, carve it out. This is probably going to end up making a big mess, as usual. <laughs> now with those edges well defined, I can do the rest of this carving out with a Sureform tool. And that's going to make pretty short work of this. All right, let's check the fit. Huh. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's give myself a pencil line to work from. And then I can remove that with the uh, hot wire tool. bevel this top edge right up to where it meets the plywood. I'll use my wire brush to add some uh, rock texture. Make it look more like sandstone. Some uh, strata lines going through there. Sometimes I really like to gouge in there and break chunks off. It just gives a much more natural look I think. This is getting pretty flimsy now. I should probably stop. I'll go ahead and set this shape with my heat gun. And that gets rid of all the fuzz. Kind of locks that texture in. Now I'll go ahead and glue this on with some Loctite Power Grab adhesive. Now I want to use pretty much the same technique and fill in between these two uh, uprights. Okay, well I'm going to be making uh, more layers of rock going down into the canyon here. Uh, but before I do that, I want to mix up a small batch of Sculpta Mold and use it to blend uh, the edge between the plywood and the foam. Mix this up with, you know, just enough water to hold it together. Sculpta mold comes in a powder. It's a mixture of plaster and cellulose. Great for this kind of thing, especially for filling gaps. I've got a few of those. And my favorite tools to use with it is a good old kitchen butter knife. Just use a wet finger to blend those different surfaces together. Once it's painted and detailed, uh, it'll be really hard to see that joint there. And I'm using it to fill in the gap here between these two pieces of foam. Just kind of push it back in there and then feather it out. I don't want to forget the back side of the arch too. Okay, well now it's time for me to clean up and let all this dry overnight. Well, all right, it's the next day. That Sculpta Mold has dried completely, but now I want to finish out some of the rock work down below it using the same materials and the same techniques that I used to make the arch.
Okay, I think I'm done with my rock carving for at least this section, this little project. Got our natural bridge done and have made a pretty good start on Bandit Canyon as well. You'll notice here it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, to the base. Uh, that's because the canyon is actually going to step down in a series of little pour-offs like you often see out in uh, canyon country. And all of the different layers were done with exactly the same technique I showed you. Here we've got a, a talus slope coming down. And so what I did here is uh, just I did uh, uh, vertical scribing with the wire brush instead of horizontal. So you've got that look of, you know, broken rock falling down like that. And of course, when it's all painted and detailed, uh, that'll be much more apparent. And speaking of painting and finishing, the next thing I want to do is come back and fill uh, these gaps here in between the layers, kind of smooth them out a little bit. But I'm not going to use sculpt mold this time. Uh, this time I'm going to use uh, just regular spackle, uh, you know, vinyl spackling compound that you can pick up at any hardware store. It works great on foam like this. It does shrink a little bit when it dries. Uh, so, you know, you want to use it sparingly. That's why I don't uh, use it up here to fill larger gaps, just for the smaller little gaps right here. Works great for that. To apply the spackle, I'm going to use, you know, mostly my finger to work it back in there, like so. And then come back with a wet paintbrush and clean that up and uh, blend it in a little bit better. In the past, you may have seen me use a product called Foam Putty on here. And uh, that's something I was experimenting with. But I found that it really, it's a little bit different than spackle, but not enough <laughs> to, to say that it's any better. So spackle it is because it's cheap and very readily available. I'm using a, a semi-stiff brush down here because with that I can not only, you know, dip it in water and, and smooth this out, but I can also add some texture to the spackle just by stabbing it. This kind of geology is very much inspired by the canyon country around here. You know, the cliff face and then the slope and then the harder layer of rock down there. That's very similar to what you see in Sedona and up at the Grand Canyon. When I'm done with this step, the whole thing's going to look like a pink birthday cake with white frosting. Okay, I'll let all that dry for a couple hours, wash my hands, <laughs> we'll come back and get the first scenic base coat on here. This is not a jar of peanut butter. I know it looks like a jar of peanut butter. In fact, it used to be a jar of peanut butter. But now this jar holds my special formula scenic base color that I use on the entire Bandit Canyon Railway. In fact, it's sort of a lighter mixture than what I use on the Thunder Mesa layout. If you're looking for a similar color, uh, you might check out uh, raw sienna. Get a tube of that in acrylic. It's very, very close to this. You know, lighten it up with a little white, and you've got you've got this same scenic base color. And right now, I'm going to use this to paint all of that because the spackle's dry, the sculptor mold's dry, and I'm tired of looking at pink foam. These are the brushes I like to use for most of my scenery painting. This is a one-inch filbert brush. I've been using it for years, and this is what probably a number eight. Uh, just a soft bristle brush that you'd get at any craft store. Good for use with acrylic paint. So this uh, for the broad strokes and this uh, for getting into the harder to reach areas. My only goal here right now is just to get an even coat of this color on all of that scenery just built.
now we wait for all of this to dry. You might be sensing a theme here. Well, I waited a few hours for the paint to dry. And now I'm on to the next step, which is a dark wash, as you can see. This is a mixture, about 60-40 of black and burnt umber, and then a whole bunch of water to dilute it down. So it's a transparent wash. And the purpose of this is to darken up all of the, uh, all the cracks and crevices. You could uh, apply this with a spray bottle as well. And now continuing with our theme, we wait for this to dry. While I wait for that wash to dry, I've got some fascia that I can install on here. Cut from some uh, one eighth of an inch thick masonite. Most of the layout is not going to have a fascia. This is just for this side of the canyon where the uh, where the rockwork doesn't extend all the way down to the bottom because it's the, the canyon stair steps down there a little bit. Use a piece of cardboard here as a pad so this C-clamp doesn't uh, mark the surface. So when all of this rock work is done, it will also extend out over the top of the fascia like that. Kind of a natural broken edge look. Over on my table, I've got everything I'm going to need to do the final paint job. I've got my my scenic base colors. This is the Bandit Canyon scenic base. This is the Calico Mountain scenic base. This is the Thunder Mesa scenic base. So we've got dark, light, and this one's kind of a halfway between the two. I probably won't even need to use these, the big gallons, but we'll see. Uh, and then I have uh, some tube acrylic colors. These are, you know, bargain artist acrylics from the craft store. Main color I'll be using, the main two colors really I'll be using is uh, burnt sienna and this unbleached titanium. And then to intensify and punch things up in some areas, I've got some burnt umber, some burnt sienna, and some yellow ochre, which a little scared of that. It's uh, you want to use that in, you know, very, very much in moderation. That's a really powerful color. Um, got my palette, a couple of paint brushes, paper towels, water. I think I got everything I need. I'm going to start by mixing my scenic base color with a little bit of that unbleached titanium just to just to lighten it up just a little bit and then just start hitting the tops of the surfaces which is very easy to do that's that's what your brush kind of wants to do naturally it's not going to want to get back into all those cracks and crevices unless you really jam it back in there so you just take it and do like just like i'm doing here and i always mention this but it's worth repeating uh, acrylic paints are going to dry a shade darker than they go on so take your time you know as you're doing this and now these are the exact same colors that i use to paint the rest of the scenery so it's very easy for me to just blend it up into stuff that's already there. It's all going to blend together nicely. Not worrying too much about the inside of the canyon, the other side of the arch. All of that is going to be um, finished up at a later date when I do the rest of the canyon through here. So just trying to get this side up to a nice level of finish today. Now I want to mix in some more of this unbleached titanium with the same mixture. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to be bold. Mix in a little bit of this yellow ochre as well, just a tiny little teaspoon worth. And one thing I want here is a big band of lighter rock right through here. So that's what this color is going to be. If you go back and look at my my concept sketch that I did for this, it shows, it shows this. It shows these different bands of color in the rock. And I want to take it and you know, get most of the paint off the brush and kind of feather that down. 
And same thing up here, bring it up just, uh, just a little bit. For the next layer, I'm going to use some pure raw sienna. And I don't mind that this paint below is still wet. In fact, I want that so I can blend the colors together. Carry that all the way around. And let those layers blend together. Now I'll mix in some burnt sienna, just a little bit. And we'll do these rocks down here near the bottom of the canyon, this layer. They don't call it Red Rock Country for nothing, folks. And then this will probably be a shelf of limestone, so it's going to be a lighter shade. Again, notice how I'm just, I'm just hitting the tops, letting that shadow show through. This is successive layering of the paint, which makes this work. Now I'll use a little bit of burnt umber. Um, to create the look, see like up here, this is a desert varnish. This is where the water runs down and stains the sides of the cliffs. One thing that's particularly effective is to take that burnt umber, maybe mix it with a little, just a little black to darken it a bit more, and shove it back up in between where two layers come together, and then just kind of pull it down like that. Now the next thing is to go back with the scenic base color one more time and really just dry brush over the top of all of this to kind of, you know, tone it down just a little bit and blend everything together. That way we've got, you know, maybe a little too garish, a little bit too strong. Some of the colors, this is going to bring it back. Make everything harmonious, everything work together. Once again, I'm mixing some unbleached titanium in with the scenic base color, but this time a, a brighter shade, more, more of the unbleached titanium, because this is the highlight color. On a very light touch, just go around and Again, just hit the tops of the rocks. And the final pass is with some pure unbleached titanium. This is the lightest highlight color. And I'm basically only using that on the lighter toned rocks down here. This limestone really makes it pop and stand out. But, you know, again, I'm just dry brushing. You really want to have a light touch. Do this very sparingly at the top of this also. Well, I think the paint job is pretty much done. Just want to dry brush some age onto the track. Just little grays and light tans make the ties look old and worn out. Now I want to ballast the track through here using the same red dirt I used over here in the hole in the wall, so everything will match up nicely. Go ahead and blend this edge up here in while I'm at it. When you're ballasting track, you know, really take the time to manicure that road bed. So I want to make sure there's nothing up there that's going to interfere with the passing of the trains. Nothing up in the web of the rail. It's a lot easier to do it now than after everything's glued down. And I'll go ahead and add some dirt and rocks down here in the canyon as well. So I can glue everything down at the same time. Now give everything a good misting with some wet water water with a couple of drops of liquid detergent in there to break the surface tension. And then I'll dribble on some diluted white glue. Now, some people like to spray it on. I prefer the control I get just dribbling it out of the bottle like this. That's all going to spread out and soak in. While I wait for that uh, diluted white glue to dry, a good time to go back and add some real rock here and there. 
I'm going to have some big ones that fell down here to the bottom of the canyon I'm using some Eileen's tacky glue to attach these. You're always going to have a lot of broken rock and debris underneath a, an arch like this, which is, uh, you know, probably why you wouldn't want to lay railroad tracks over them. But we're going to ignore that fact. And we'll add some larger, loose bits of rock. Let them uh, fall naturally down where they would where they would end up. Glue all of that down. And you're always going to have tree limbs and things that were washed down by flash floods. There's not going to be much growing in a place like this. Maybe a few cactus. These are from Pegasus scale models. And maybe a few stray bushes going out of the cracks and crevices. Now I can clean off the top of the rails with some mineral spirits. Get all the glue and paint off of there. Well, you know, every unique natural rock formation like this needs a name, so I think we're going to call this Improbable Arch. my friends that was a whole lot of fun and I'm very pleased with the way this turned out it's given me a really good idea on how to move forward on finishing the rest of the rock work and canyon scenery here on the Bandit Canyon Railway I hope you will stay tuned for all of that and I want to thank you so much for watching today if you enjoyed the video please like subscribe share hit that notification bell so you'll see more coming from Thunder Mesa Studio you can also follow over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and see the resources links and merchandise available at the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio as always a huge shout out and thank you to our patreon members who help to make these videos possible until next time keep moving forward my friends adios for now Thank you.